Bryant Young, welcome to Sports Spectrum. Welcome back to Sports Spectrum. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Again. Again. It's nice. Well, last time we had you on, you were a San Francisco 49ers Hall of Famer. Uh, this time, it's a little different. You're a pro football Hall of Famer. Congratulations, yeah, by the way. Thank you very much. Such it, a cool thing. It's been an incredible ride, just, um, just all of last year, and just even thinking about my path getting to that particular point um just all the people that were a huge part of that um just a unique special elite um honor to be the guy representing all the people that have been a part of my life yes i want to talk about the path certainly um describe your emotions when you found out now I, i do have a question about that too by the way because they showed the video of charles haley coming to your house to sort of knock on the door, do the knock that the Hall of Famers are accustomed to. And it looked like you were really surprised. But I always think, like, how did they stage that? Did they set that up so Bryant Young's like, yeah, somebody might yeah, be coming to no. your house? They don't do any of that, huh? It's, it's, it's not staged. It is, it's, it is thought out in terms of um, setting up the surprise. Okay. I had no idea. Did your wife know? My wife knew. Okay, that's <laughs> yes. cool. It's like so almost a surprise birthday she party. She wasn't right? surprised, but I was surprised. Okay. They needed her to help set up the surprise. So okay. I think uh, voting was on the 18th of January. Mm-hmm. And she, I think they called her the next day. Um, and so um, she got to talking to Michelle, and they kind of start you know planning this whole thing and they didn't want to do anything out of the ordinary right and initially she wanted to bring my dad uh from chicago and be there but that would have been out of the ordinary Mm -hmm. um so it was just us and our family my daughter drove back from virginia tech and my son she picked up my son from high school and he came back to the house and And where's the house north carolina and yeah charlotte north carolina yeah Yeah. and so uh so yeah, so we're sitting at the table. We're supposed to have this meeting. There was a friend, a friend who was on it. We're on a Zoom call with a friend, and uh, we're setting up this meeting because we're trying to do some painting in our house. And she's an interior designer, mm. and so, so we're sitting down at the dinner table on, on a Zoom meeting. But I noticed before we got set up, my wife got like real fidgety and nervous, and she was like, "No, you sit here. Like you don't." Uh, so come to find out, she didn't want <laughs> she didn't want me uh, to see a text message that may have come up on her computer, right? Um, and give up the big surprise. So that's why she was a little anxious at that time. But the knock on the door was incredibly special. Hmm. Uh, super surprised. Um, you know, th- the initial knock was so loud I thought somebody was trying to tear my door down. <laughs> I'm like, who in the heck is this at my door? Nobody knocks uh, on doors anymore, by the way, unless it's somebody from Amazon, right? right. <laughs> but that was the thing. I'm like, okay, he knocked. And I didn't think about the knock like that. I'm like, who is this at my door knocking like that? Yeah. So, like, the doorbell wasn't used at all. Right. Um, but they also didn't use the doorbell because I have a camera on my door. Mm-hmm. So that was the, the whole setup as well. Yeah. What a cool So moment. I go to the door, and immediately when I open the door, I seen this big pinhead, big smile, <laughs> yellow jacket, and it was Charles Haley. And um, I immediately just was just taken aback. Yeah. Uh, such a special moment. Charles Haley, I thought, was an interesting choice, too. You guys never played together. We did play together. You did play together. Yep. Remind uh, me so when. So in 1998, I got hurt uh, November 30th. And they brought Charles Charles back at the end of the season. Right at the end of his career, right? Yeah, so he was the tail end of his career. um, Came, I got got him back from Dallas. um, Yeah. And so they brought him in to finish the regular season, and he played through the playoffs. Okay. I didn't play with him that year because I was hurt. I broke my leg. Yeah. And so they signed him back for the '99 season, and uh, that's where I had a chance to play with him in my comeback year. Nice. And so just a super just um professional when when you talk about charles you hear about all the things that he may have done off the field sure uh, i respect the guy a whole lot because of being transparent with mental health and being yes. an advocate for for that but uh, when charles would cross the line to go practice it was all about business he was focused uh, so i had a level of respect for him and i'm glad i had a chance to to play with him for that just that one year he's a big joker too because if you watch the video uh, which is a great video that the Hall of Fame put up and NFL Films put up. 
uh, online. We'll try to find a link to that and share that in the show notes. But it was such a fascinating video because it has you walking with him and stuff. And all of a sudden, you know, he's walking by the pool and he just nudges you and you end up splashing right in that pool. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was kind of bittersweet. Well, I'll tell you this, my rookie year, um, I didn't bring breakfast buddies one morning, breakfast sandwiches from Burger King. Okay. And so I had been warned, warned the next time you don't bring breakfast sandwiches, you're going to a swimming pool. We had an indoor swimming pool. And you had a so lot of veterans on your team did, that Richard rookie did, year, right? Ricky Jackson, uh, Dana Stubblefield was in his second year. Tim Harris was there. Charles Mann from the Washington Redskins. So we yeah. had some dudes in our room. Yes. So this one day, I didn't, I didn't pick up the sandwiches because I was going to be late. So what did they do? They tried to pick me up and throw me in a pool, but no success. <laughs> so I was fighting, <laughs> scratching, and clawing, and uh, it didn't happen. So uh, fast forward to when Charles came by, yeah. um, you know, I didn't even think about it. We're walking in the back. I was just thinking they wanted to get out of the front yeah. away from, you know, potentially drawing attention. And so we go to the back. We start walking toward the pool, and I still didn't think about it. Hmm. And all of a sudden he, he separates and then the big push. Yes. But it was definitely worth it. It was. Yeah, you're rough. mad, but at the same time you're like, you know what? I just had something really cool happen yeah. to me. I'll be fine. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the water was super cold, though, because our pool heater broke like a oh, week before. <laughs> I was going to say, it's not exactly 90 degrees like it is where we are right now in Charlotte, North Carolina in January too often. So one, one thing that was really neat, I thought, was that they honored you at the Super Bowl as well. And we were watching the game, and all of a sudden I saw all the people kind of stand there, all the fellow inductees of yours for 2022 class, and there, were you, there was you. And you had your phone out because you were so – I think into the moment that you didn't want to miss what was happening. Describe that moment on just being able to be at the Super Bowl again. Uh, great game, by the way, to watch. But being at the Super Bowl and being honored there. You yeah. haven't even done the speech yet, but all yeah. this stuff is happening. Yeah, so we, we actually found out at NFL Honors. I had to hold that information uh, for about two weeks. So mm. the 18th was the vote. 19th, they called my wife. The 25th is when the knock happened. And then I had this period of two weeks where I had to hold this information. We get announced NFL honors, and it was incredible. But then we have this moment at the Super Bowl where we're announced yeah. uh, to an, another national or international audience. 100 and, million people. And, and that was incredible just to be a part of that and, um, and be there at that moment. And to be at a, uh, at a stadium with fans, you know, just thinking about what, the, what we've been through in the last two years. Yeah. The Super Bowl in Los Angeles, 70,000 or whatever it was, people had to be pretty neat, even though you weren't playing in the game, just to be in a, a yeah. sta and, and at a game where there was the roar of the crowd yeah, once again. Absolutely. It was uh, incredible in that way because of the atmosphere, the energy, and the spirit that you feel just being at a Super Bowl with all the things that happen, you know, pre game with the national anthem and then the halftime and all of that. Yeah. But just to be there was really special. Bryant Young is our guest here on Sports Spectrum, the new 2022 Pro Football Hall of Fame inductee. Uh, so this might, I don't know, I guess enter into your, your thoughts on when you start to begin to do your, your speech, mm -hmm. which you got plenty of months to put together now. Um, but it's an important one. It's the one that everybody will always watch forever, right? It'll be on YouTube and NFL Films and all these places. And you want to make sure you get that right. So my question really is about running this race well that the Lord has placed upon you and, you know, ups and downs and here and there and everywhere. Yeah. When you think about this long race that you've run, maybe describe a little bit of the emotions that come to mind and what you're thinking about from your walk, your relationship with Jesus. Well, that's, that's a really good question. Um, it, it's been an, it's been a, a journey, um, just in terms of, uh, my faith and how it's grown over the years, uh, how much um, God has been a big part of my life. And, um, you know, I, I tell people like, you know, I am humble because <clears throat> because of the work that God has done in my life. Um, one, how he's created me and wired me and given these gifts and allowed me to work in a way to do the things that I do. And so I'm humbled in that way. And I'm humbled in terms of all the people that he placed in my life to mentor to sharp develop to nurture to to father to to be mothered by um and just to be loved on by so many different people and so uh, this journey has been so so uh just rich 
Hmm. Because we all think about moments like this, <clears throat> but we don't often think about all the, the hard times that we go through. And I could tell you, I've been through some really, really hard times, and those moments have grown me in such a way. Um, when I'm flat, on, when you're flat on your back, or when you're in, when things don't look very good, yeah. um, you know, that's when, for me, I would really seek God even more in those moments when you're flat on your back and you're left with nowhere else to turn. Mm. And so in those moments, um, as hard as they may be, they grow you in so many different ways that we can't imagine that. And so until you go through it, you, then you look back on it and be like, wow, that, you know, that, that really was a moment where God really challenged me and grew me in a way that I didn't even think was possible. Do you think about the importance of pointing to him and we talked about it. We're in some different uh, meetings and, and things going on down here in Florida at this conference. And, you know, it's all about the decrease of self and the increase of Christ. Absolutely. Have you thought about, and you know, it's early still, but just that speech, that opportunity to be on a big stage and be able to decrease in self and increase in yeah. Christ. What I, what I want people to really know is that how much Christ has played a major role in my life. And um, that will be hopefully uh, told with clarity mm -hmm. and, um, and conviction and, and to let people know um, that I am not perfect, but, but I serve and love a perfect God. And so I'm incredibly happy to even think about just preparing for that and how that will be told. Um, and then just how, you know, so many amazing people, uh, places I've been a part of. And, you know, God, I believe God is in the de details of everything that we do. He's in the details of life. And uh, there's no mistake, you know, as, as hard as things may be, they happen for certain reasons. And um, but God is always there. And I, I can assure you that. You know, through the hard times, God has always been there. He's never left or forsaken me, and um, and so I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to just sharing that story. January 27th was a big moment for you, big day. You turned the big 5-0. Uh, I'm not far behind you, by the way. Um, but I was thinking about this when, and that's a big moment. You want to reflect on life. It's just I think naturally that takes place when you hit a milestone like that. It happened to me when I was 40. I'm sure it'll happen to me when I turn 50. Um, when you think about turning 50, what is your desire or hope maybe that the Lord does through you as you enter into the next 30, 40, or who knows, maybe even another 50 years, God willing, what do you think, you know, as you think about the future and the race that you want to still run, yeah. kind of where the Lord might direct you and take you? Yeah, just, uh, I think too, I mean, up until this point is always being, um, and it's been a process. Yeah. Always being in tune to the Holy Spirit and being uh, in touch with the Holy Spirit and listen to where God is leading me. And so I'm at a point in my life where there's growth that needs to continue to happen in my own life. I don't have it all figured out. And so I got to remain soft and malleable and, and, and teachable in those moments for God to speak and, and me to hear his voice and where he's leading me. And so... Um, I want to be where God wants me to be. And so uh, I'm excited about that, but also kind of scared at the same time. But that's part of having faith is that we don't know what that potentially may be. And we have training in terms of what our talents are and things of that nature, but but God can do something completely different or steer you in a way that you never saw coming. And so um, that's, that's exciting. And it's also, you know, kind of, surprising and a little scared at times you know yeah, um, that's faith though right? absolutely that's that's why it's called faith that's right on the field um your former team that you played your entire career for the 49ers they had such an incredible run this year I just was th thinking about asking you because I watched you on social media and I liked how you kind of became a little bit of a fan as you were you know tweeting and sharing some of your thoughts as the game's happening and they make that run all the way to the NFC Championship game. Could have easily been in the Super Bowl if a bounce or two happens. How much fun was it for you to watch that team this year make that run? It was it was very fun. Just the way they started off the season. Um, you know, they had some games they should have won. Um, they won the games that they should. Um, 
and um, you know, or lost some lost some games they should have won. Sure. But um, but just in terms of how they stuck to the plan and they were resilient in what they did, um, I thought that was beautiful to kind of see. You know, you hear all these things, these backstories about Jimmy, to, Jimmy, you know, potentially being started, uh, traded away from the team, and they got this young guy that's waiting in the wings. Right. And and but you never saw Jimmy bat an eye, um, and so I respect that because he showed courage in that moment, um, knowing what what what's going to happen. I think he was able to play free and just you know, hey, if it, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. That's that's tomorrow. But I'm going to take care of today. Yeah. And so that's how he played. And to see how the defense played. Um, incredible. They, they, they beat they, Dallas and they beat Green absolutely. Bay on the road. Incredible wins. Yeah, incredible wins. I, I didn't doubt him, but I knew it was going to be hard to win in Dallas. Yeah. And then they won. And then I knew it was going to be incredibly hard to win in Green Bay. And they won. They won, yeah. They pulled it off. So, but just – they were they were coming together at the right time, and that's what you love to see, like peaking and and being your best at the right moment. And so they did that. They just didn't make enough plays in that last game. Well, it's hard to it's hard to do that in a, in a consistent way and run the table. It's very hard to do that. And the Rams, kudos to them, they won the game. But that game could have gone. I mean, the whole playoffs. It felt like whoever was playing. It was a bounce or two here or there, and the other team that lost could have easily won, and we could have seen a completely different Super Bowl. That's right. For all we know, um, I was thinking about the Super Bowl because I watched Aaron Donald do his thing. I mean, he wrecked uh, that last play to basically win the game for the Rams, and he's obviously going to be wearing a gold jacket just like you someday. Uh, but when I think about his position and your position; it's the same defensive tackle, and you guys both played a position that doesn't normally get a lot of sacks I mean you're the all-time sacks leader for the 49ers so I just wanted to ask a question as a guy who played that position so well as an all pro and a pro bowler and now a hall of famer when you watch Aaron Donald do his thing what comes to mind it's got to be impressive to watch even from a guy who did it so well like yourself yeah he's he's really a, a special talent um just quick um plays with leverage good hand hand-eye coordination and balance um just uh he's a force he's a force on the field he can change uh the course of any game that he's in and so and he did it in the super bowl he did that in the super bowl <laughs> he made some really tough plays at the end yeah um but to me there are some of the most critical plays that determine the outcome of the game and so you talk about being your best at the right time he was his best at the right time uh, for his team to win the super bowl he was impressive to watch. So were you in your career, Brian. Uh, my last question for you, when you think about the Hall of Fame and all that has taken place in your life leading up to this, you said it in the very beginning, you know, this has been a journey. This has been a process. This has been quite the race, right, that you've run. Um, you've seen those low points as well. And we had you on the podcast and talked about a lot of those previously. And I'll let people go listen to that interview to hear more about your journey. But when you think about all that you've done, all that he's taken you to right now, what is the great lesson that the Lord has shown you or taught you where you are today when you think about this, this whole race that you've been on? Um, one is to uh, never be surprised <laughs> at anything. <laughs> at what I mean, he could do, right? <laughs> at what he can do yeah. um, um, or what, what we may go through. And we have to realize that God is bigger than any problem that we will potentially face. And uh, and so those are the times when we really have to cling on to our faith. I, I not, what I what I tell to the people is is that in moments of just affliction and just the hards of life, um, it really does test your faith and um, and the foundation of it. Um, and so I'm glad you know my faith is rooted in Him. And the victory that I have in him. And so, um, but I think, too, just having a foundation, it, it also, going through those moments, really grew it and take it has taken us and me, our family, to another level hmm. of just, just trust and, and God's grace and mercy for us. And I know God loves us. I mean, when you look at Jesus in the Bible, Jesus went through everything that we will possibly ever go through. Like, I mean... 
I get emotional when I talk about this because I, sometimes we, as as people, may lose hope at times because we go through hard things in life. Yeah. But when you look at the example of Christ, like he died on the cross for our sins because God loved us so much and he submitted to, to God's will and he died for us. Jesus did every potential thing that we could go through. He did it. He died a bloody death. He wept. He felt our pain. Um, he went through all those emotions and things that we will experience in life. So how could how dare us say, why me? Mm. Right? Well, Jesus did it. And he went through all those things. And he, and he conquered. And so when I look at that, I, I'm thinking, uh, you know, who am I? But if but if we're experiencing all those hard things, it's just a matter of us continuing to hold on and uh, knowing that, that um, Jesus conquered death and, uh, and evil and, um, you know, just continue to keep the faith and one day we'll be in glory. That's very well said. Bryant, thanks, buddy. Thanks for being here. Congratulations. Really, really happy for you and your family. I know this is not just a you deal. This is a a family deal. There's so many people involved in all of your success, but just to really appreciate the time and and uh, it'll be fun to watch you down in Canton in, in July or August. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Jason.